Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Nervello. We're your host, Jasmine and Dayka. And today we're going to be talking about Kardashians, BBLs, and blackfishing. So, what is blackfishing? Blackfishing is a term coined by journalist Juana Thompson, used to describe non black people who borrow aspects of black culture, such as our skin tone, hairstyles, makeup, and fashion, in order to make a profit. And non black people blackfish in many ways from their hair, the way they dress, the, how dark they tan their skin, and more. And a lot of non-Black people have actually gained fame and fortune for the way that they Blackfish. And mm-hmm. one group that you're all familiar with for doing this are the Kardashians, of course. They've Blackfished in so many ways. Um, one notable way that they have is their hair, which they're constantly wearing Black hairstyles from cornrows, bantu knots, and more. Um, the first instance where I noticed Kim Kardashian appropriating a Black hairstyle um, was when she did the boxer braids. Mm-hmm. So basically, she just braided her hair in cornrows and she called them boxer braids. Now, I remember this happening around like eighth or ninth grade. And like when she did this, all the white girls at school were doing their hair like this and calling them boxer braids. But yeah, that was just like annoying because like those are cornrows. And mm-hmm. when you change the name, it's like you're taking away the blackness from it. I really think it's like they're basically, like, as you said, they're taking away the culture from it and the blackness from it. To me, like, it's a huge, like, cultural erasure because you're, it's kind of like people are looking up to her, oh, like, this, she coined this term, right? Mm -hmm. And they're also finding inspiration from non-Black women who were appropriating these Black hairstyles. So it doesn't sit right with me to use Black women's, like, hairstyles, like, Black culture, um, Black hairstyles, and completely rebrand it to a mostly white audience. And it's, a you know, a non-Black woman doing this. Right. Mm -hmm. And then the next instance that we have Kim Kardashian appropriating a Black hairstyle, and this one bothered me a lot. This um, was when she did Fulani braids. Mm-hmm. And she posted a picture of herself on Instagram wearing Fulani braids. And the caption, she called them Bo Derek braids. If you're not familiar with Bo Derek, she's like this white actress. And there was like this one movie where she wore Fulani braids. So now white women start calling them Bo Derek braids. Um, so yeah, that was just like really annoying because she like took this black hairstyle, which is a- actually um, like an African hairstyle. That's why it's called Fulani. Mm-hmm. Um and she, like, credited it to this white woman who's also appropriating our culture. Just, yeah. yeah. It, I, I really think a lot of, like, these non-Black women who do this, especially white women who do this, most of the times they don't, like, they will say, oh, like, this is cultural appreciation. But I don't think you're appreciating a culture you know nothing about. You cannot pick and choose what you want to know about that culture and say oh like you know what I mean like it's it just it's just weird like yeah. you have to I don't know like how to go about like appropriating black hairstyles because like it's not meant for your hair texture but the least you can do in my opinion is find inspiration from a black woman not yeah. a white woman who, right who so doesn't even gonna, like a appropriate black hair style like at least give credit to black women i know like that's the bare minimum and it's mm-hmm. still not the right thing to do because you yeah. can appreciate culture without doing the same things with you know as that culture but it's still some i don't know in some way it's a little bit better you know what i mean yeah right because it, it's like at least they're acknowledging where it came from exactly but yeah here she's just like crediting another culture appropriator so yeah kim she loves her black hairstyles and she's been doing them for a long time and you know she's been called out for it a lot and she's aware of it and recently she did an interview with id magazine um where they asked her about this and she said in quotes she would never do anything to appropriate any culture some of the choices that she's made pertaining to how she styles her hair have been influenced by her daughter northwest 
And then she said in quotes, honestly, a lot of the time it comes from asking us to do matching care. I've had these conversations with her that are like, hey, maybe this hairstyle would be better on you and not me. But I also want her to feel that I can do a hairstyle with her and not make a big deal of it either. If that's something that she really, that she's really asking for and really wants. So there's a lot of issues with this. Obviously, I can understand like a white mother wanting to relate to her black daughter, especially if her black daughter is like asking for certain hairstyles. But with Kim Kardashian, I feel like that's like not the case because we see her wearing these hairstyles and it has nothing to do with the North. Like she's wearing these hairstyles on red carpets. She's wearing them for her Instagram. Northwest is not telling her, oh, you need to wear this hairstyle at this event and these red carpet events. And I think it's really annoying that she's like using her black daughter as an excuse. It's like, no, you're appropriating black culture. It has nothing to do with the fact that you have a black daughter. Exactly. I also, um, I don't know if you've noticed this, but I think this is a very current theme with mm-hmm. white partners or like white, the white people within um, yeah. interracial couples. They will use their proximity to blackness to justify mm-hmm. their racism. And this did not only have to apply to um, appropriating culture. You know, in this case, it applies very clearly to appropriating black hairstyles, but you will see that they apply it, like they will use, oh, my daughter's black, my husband's black, my do- my son is black, my mother-in-law is black, my cousin is black. They will use right. all these excuses mm-hmm. to justify their racism instead of question why people are telling them that what they're doing is racist and i really think if a black person comes up to you and you know you claim to love those black people in your life you should take time out of your day and educate yourself i feel like Mm -hmm. that's may human decency you know what i mean so i i don't understand um why she's using her black daughter to justify it like it doesn't make sense to me you know what I mean right and she also goes out of her way to say that there's also history of braiding hair in Armenia and that people forget she's Armenian as well here's the thing yeah (laughs) here's the thing Armenian culture Armenian braiding hair um, braiding styles are way different than African and black hairstyles Right. We're not going to act like we don't understand this right now, Kim. Mm-hmm. You know what you're doing. Exactly. She's like, oh, yeah, we have braiding hair in Armenia, too. But it's like, okay, why are you wearing Armenian braids? Why are you wearing Fulani braids? Exactly. And I don't, I'm sorry, like, I don't know Kim for her Armenian culture. At least Kim yeah, for the past not. few She's Yeah. I feel like in the beginning of her career, she was more embracing her Armenian side. And, like, I do agree. she was known for being Armenian. But, like, recently, like, once she married Kanye, I feel like that's when she was like, mm, I kind of want to get into Black culture. Mm-hmm. And she became popular for, like, doing Black hairstyles and getting credit for it. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Mm-hmm. And then... We have another instance of Kim, again, appropriating a Black hairstyle. Um, mm-hmm. So she got pop smoke braids done, and she posted a picture of them on Instagram, right? So when she got these braids done, she actually got them done by a Black woman hairstylist. Um, her name is Sierra Constantinople. Mm-hmm. But when she posted a picture of her braids on Instagram, instead of tagging Sierra, she actually t- actually tagged her white hairstylist Chris Appleton. Chris is Kim's regular hairstylist and she chose to tag him instead of Sierra giving a white man credit for her pop smoke braids instead of the black woman who actually did them. And Sierra's friend saw this, right? And she mm-hmm. actually went on Instagram and posted something saying she was really upset about it. This is what she posted and you can pause to read. Let's talk about anti-black anti-blackness this morning. I need to discuss appropriation and theft of our culture, our vernacular, our vibes, our lips, our hair, our essence. My, my sister, Sierra, 
is an amazing celebrity hairstylist in Paris, West Style, Janelle Monet, Mary J. Blige, Solange, etc., and other sisters. Well, Sierra was called in the last minute to give Kim Kardashian West with a style of buff for her husband's fashion show last week and a room full of white folks. She gave Kim this style with her uninspiring hairstylist, Chris Appleton, looking on in awe, I'm sure. And guess what your favorite white girl Kim does this week? Tag said uninspiring white stylist to give him credit for these black ass cornrows. I know every black Ooh, wait, hold on. <laughs> I know every black woman reading this is disappointed but not surprised at this disgusting behavior. The issue with white women like the Kim Kardashian West is that they do not respect black culture. They see it as a style which is taken off and put back on, and that's what makes them so dangerous. The erasure of black women's work discredits our community takes money out of our pockets and continues the white supremacist cycles that social media then spreads to the masses. Elevating problematic, clueless, dangerous white women need to stop. Do your part to dismantle this shit. Mm-hmm. Right. Yes, sir. Mike, I feel really bad for the hairstylist. I feel bad for Sierra. And you can definitely see that this is a really recurring theme like it's a habit Mm -hmm. for kim kardashian at this point i don't care how much you apologize the thing about like apologizing is you have to learn from those mistakes and the thing is i think the black community is very gracious like they're very they're too nice to her you know what i mean yeah like the fact that a black woman thought giving kim this herself was a good idea and then kim goes and my stylist it man i don't i don't know like it's just mm-hmm. like i don't know what people need to really know like what they want to see after all this stuff because to me this is a woman who is very ignorant who's not choosing to learn even after she has a she has black children mm-hmm. you know what i mean at some point she had a black husband i'm sorry you can easily you know get divorced Yada yada yeah, but this is going to harm her children because if your mother does not care about race, black issues, does not respect your culture, what does that tell you? I don't think she respects you, yeah. and that sounds like a harsh. It sounds very harsh, but it's true. As a parent of black children, I don't care what your race is. You should be taking time to educate yourself on issues like this. Yes. So all I got to say is do better, Kim. You know what I mean? Like, what do you have to say about this? Right. And I also want to see, I like, I hate it when black hairstylists do these hairstyles for white women. I understand that they're doing it because, you know, they're getting money in their pocket for doing this. Mm-hmm. And when you're doing Kim Kardashian's hair, you're expecting her to tag you in the picture and, you know, you'll gain more attention for that. Unfortunately, Kim didn't do that. But I understand, like, why these hairstyles are still doing hairstyles for white women. Mm-hmm. But I feel like we got to learn as a community. Like, we can't trust them because look what Kim did. Yeah, I think you have to put, you have to put your boundary somewhere. Because mm-hmm. this stuff is still going to keep on happening. And personally, like, in my work of line like I don't want to be disrespected and go back to the same person who you know what I mean like or at least yeah a similar type of situation so I really agree with that I feel like we have to as a black community we have to completely shun women like Kim Kardashian Mm -hmm. and the next person we have is Chloe we have our Bantu babe (laughs) this woman tweeted same she's the bantu babe she had a picture pause to look at the picture look at our sister out here chloe bantu baby bantu we have her in bantu knots and to me like when i see this tweet i'm sorry but like this is just like it's the dumbest thing i'm it's very funny it's not that i'm laughing with you i'm laughing at you you Mm -hmm. know what i mean because Bantus are not white. Right. I have right. Let's talk about where the word Bantu comes from, first of all. So the um 
in Africa, like we have different groups of people. We have the Kushites, we have the Semites, we have we have the Nilots, and then we have the Bantus. They are people from Africa. So, Chloe, when were you in Africa? Girl, <laughs> where are your parents from? Please tell me. <laughs> it's just funny. So, and then, said, I'm you, a Bantu babe. I'm a Bantu babe. No, and her, those are not even Bantu knots. Those are like little buns, <laughs> little messy buns. I low key feel like she looks like an alien from another. Never mind. Oh, for sure. Like her hair does not look good. Mm-hmm. Listen, white women, when we tell you you don't look good in black hairstyles, we are actually doing you a favor. Right? Because you really do not look good. You do not. You know what? If I was actually being. If I was not being a good person, I would do your braids, actually. Right. Come back to me next week with, what, three hair strands, hair strands left in your head? You're basically, black hairstyles do not suit your hair texture. You got mm-hmm. culture, use that culture. Right, we're some Armenian hairstyles. I know. It. Anyways, Bantu babes don't look like this, okay? I promise you. <laughs> They don't. The next um, instance we have of our another Kardashian appropriating a black hair style is our sister Kylie. So this happened during the, you know, the King Kylie era around 2016, you know, when she had like the blue hair, the Kylie Jenner lip challenge. So, you know, an iconic time for her or whatever. But she posted a picture of herself wearing some straight back cornrows. And the caption, she said, I woke up like this. And this was posted actually during the height of the Ferguson protests and the uprise of the Black Lives Matter movement. And of course, like the Kardashians were silent during this time. But, you know, Kylie goes and posts a picture of her appropriating a Black hairstyle. But anyways, so our sister, Amanda Stenberg, commented on Kylie's picture and she said when you appropriate black features and culture but fail to use your position of power to help black Americans by directing attention towards your wigs instead of police brutality or racism hashtag white girls do it better and then Kylie responds to her by saying not if I don't not if I do go hang with a Jaden or something girl the fact that she's like go hang with Jaden, like I don't know, like that has like some kind of racist undertone. And I also, when she says like mad if I don't and mad if I do, um, says like this was not. I think it's low key narcissist, in my opinion. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean, like right? Because it's like Amanda is like criticizing what you're doing she's literally giving you tips and tricks yeah. on like being an actual human like a good a decent human being i don't know for some reason like mad if i don't mad if, mad if i do girl like please she's telling you to get out of your bubble the world is not about your wigs and all the shit exactly. and like people are dying exactly <laughs> back to the point we said where they benefit off of our culture, but they don't want to educate themselves. So, you know, King Kylie, she's the same as her sister. Right. She's silly. And then, you know, and like, it's the fact that she's like talking about, and Man was talking about police brutality, and then she like responds to go hang with Jaden or something. It's I, just like, like, why are you being so ignorant? It would be better to just, like, not even respond at all than say That's this. what I'm saying. I don't... I'm sorry, but is this even, like, the social media we're at right now? I do think the Kardashians and Jenners get away with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. But I'm surprised a celebrity is able to respond to yeah. a very, uh, like, concerning comment with something like this. It sounds like... Yeah. The first one... Like, where was like, her publicist at? Yeah. Like, it's... And this is like this shows the culture we um the culture 
around the Kardashians, they are giving, they're given um, this courtesy of, oh, being able to be ignorant and saying, oh, I am learning. They do the same shit. They're still given like, oh, you, you're forgiven. Like, it's okay. And I think it reflects back, it reflects on what type of people they have within their audience and like their fan base. Because I don't think the, um, the regular fan of Kylie or Kim is a black woman. I think it's a white woman who wants to look like them and it's probably the same as them. You know what I mean? It's a reflection yeah. of what they do. So they're still going to have that fan base because if you're friends with a bunch of racists, no one's going to say you're a racist. What's your spirit animal? Tupac Shakur. Next, we're going to be talking about Black culture as an accessory. Mm-hmm. So in 2017, Kendall and Kylie made t-shirts with pictures of Tupac and Biggie Smalls on them. And then mm-hmm. they put selfies of themselves on top of those pictures. And when they did this, they did not even contact Tupac or Biggie's families before doing this. Um, but Biggie's mom responded on Instagram saying, this product has no affiliation to the notorious B.I.G. estate. The estate was never contacted about using the likeness of Biggie. In the caption, she said, I am not sure who told Kylie and Kendall that they had the right to do this. The disrespect of these girls to not even reach out to me or anyone connected to the estate baffles me. I have no idea why they think they can exploit the deaths of Tupac and, Big- and my son Christopher to sell a t-shirt. This is disrespectful, disgusting, and, and exploitation at its worst. So, you know, this was just really, like, exploitive because they're literally using these pictures of these, you know, black men and then putting their faces on top of them and it's just like first of all i feel like this is also when like streetwear became like more popular amongst the white people i so, still and i feel like when they did this they were like oh yeah like let's make like our own black type streetwear put our faces on it to do this like you have to be really unaware to a certain level like you have to lack i'm pr- like you have to lack a lot of like emotional intelligence and just like social mm-hmm. intelligence i don't know if that's a thing but I'm, I'm assuming it's a thing because how you interact socially might reflect on your upbringing might reflect on i don't know i think they lack both social and emotional intelligence because First of all, they were teenagers at this time, right? I'm pretty sure they were teenagers at this time, or at least Kendall was maybe 20, 21. I don't know how old she is, but they were very yeah, young. They were teenagers. They're, just, they're not that accomplished. The only accomplishment you have is being from Chris Jenner, like exploiting you guys in online, to say the mm-hmm. least. And you're, you, you're not at the same level of legend as as <laughs> Tupac and Biggie. Really? Why would you put your face on it? You're not black, mm-hmm. first of all. Exactly. It's like, you're, what do you even have to like do with Tupac and Biggie? Like, why is your face on top of theirs? Like... And it's also it's like an odd thing to do. Black streetwear. Yeah. It's also like a weird design where it's like on yeah. top of the faces. When you think of this like PR marketing point of view, this is terrible. Mm-hmm. It's good in the way that they got the attention they needed. But is, this, is it the good sustainable attention? No, it's not. Right. But that's another thing I think about too with all of these instances they have, like they know that what they've done is wrong and they keep doing the same things over and over again. And mm-hmm. I feel like at some point it's like they're just doing it for attention because, you know, like negative attention is better than no attention at all. And like we said earlier, most of their fans are white anyways. So they don't care that like people are calling them racist. Like that doesn't matter to them. I do. I really agree with you on that. 
mm-hmm. it it's just um I really feel like in life like I don't think you should people should rely on especially cele- celebrities I don't think it's good to just rely on you know attention or the amount of people that know your work etc for any reason you should be striving to be known for the good you do and how how at least like how your morals are reflected within your work mm-hmm. it doesn't come across as them being genuine <laughs> with the credentials for the goal yeah but i also feel like it might it might actually like you said they're you know their most of their audience is like white so obviously they're not going to be they're not mm-hmm. going to face the same they're going to face judgment but is it is it going to like harm their revenue is it going to harm their money you know no. money flow it's not there but when you die i don't think your money matters you know what i mean mm-hmm. i don't think how skinny how that your ass is is going to matter. People are going to people need to know you for something good. And I don't know if that's like just me just how I want to be known, but yeah. Personally, but just with the, celebrity culture in general, like that's never the case. Yeah. So <laughs> boy, it it's just it's a sad world. <laughs> That's not what our society wants. Our society does not care about the good things. So it really doesn't. And we give so many rewards to women like the Kardashians and Jenner. And we don't give that even like a fraction of that attention to black mm-hmm. women, for example. That's fucked up in my opinion. And just like talking about like the Kardashians and how they blackfish, I really think we have to talk about skin tanning. And I'm pretty sure back in two, 2007, skin tanning, when you look at the Kardashians at that time, their skin tone is not as dark as it is right now. Yeah. And I really think skin tanning is kind of like the, it's what brings together that, it's like the icing on the cake for black fishing. Because Yes, you can have the big butt, you can have all this, but at the end of the day, you're still going to have white skin. But when you skin tan, I really think that closes the deal. And I'm like, this person is not even trying to hide that they're trying to blackfish. Because at this point, like, what else, what else are you missing? You know what I mean? You might as well go to Africa. (laughs) When you start it, it just, it's just like, you know what? I'm going to start saying the N-word and all this stuff. <laughs> but you're basically, you're basically telling us. I'm a black girl. You know, like skin tanning. There's the other extreme, extreme of um, skin tanning. I do think skin tanning is actually more celebrated. It's like more normalized within society. Mm-hmm. And people say, oh, like, it's not as harmful. I don't know, like, have you heard that perspective? Yes, like, on the opposite end of, you know, skin tanning is skin bleaching. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think they're both equally harmful because we all know, like, tanning causes cancer. Um, whether it's going out in the sun for, um, like, way more hours than you're supposed to or going in a tanning bed with uv rays like you're very likely to get cancer um with extreme skin tanning Mm -hmm. um and same thing with skin bleaching and i think it's very interesting how it's like um skin tanning is so normalized whereas skin skin bleaching Bleaching. is not not Mm -hmm. saying that skin bleaching should be normalized like no nobody should bleach their skin that's terrible I think it's really interesting how because skin bleaching is something that's primarily done as done by people of color um 
it's seen as a bad thing which it is but then it's like when white people are doing the opposite thing it's seen as a good thing and something that just makes them feel beautiful Mm -hmm. and I also think it's interesting how a lot of work has been done in the science industry to make skin tanning safe for white women whereas for skin bleaching not as much work is being done at least not in America where skin bleaching isn't as common maybe in other countries where it's common more work is being done to have safe skin bleaching but I just think it's very interesting how it's treated obviously be oppositely because of the different people that are doing it just going off of the skin tanning the Kardashians they're notorious for this and we're going to put up a picture of Khloe Kardashian on the screen. This picture just came out recently. She's like actually like not that dark in this photo, to be honest. Like I wouldn't like when I look at this photo, I wouldn't say like she's black fishing or anything. But I just thought this photo was hilarious because when you look at the color of her face and then you zoom in and you look at the color of her hand, it's like a 10 shade difference. Also, I feel like um chloe she should have used kim's product though for this picture <laughs> chloe <laughs> to fix her hands <laughs> like why didn't she use her sister's product it was right there it would have been a good ass like marketing it would have been like she would have just tagged them yeah but but and chloe's chloe's no that, like it's so crazy and like even like when you watch love island okay these british girls they love they love to make their skin like 10 shades darker <laughs> And I often get lots of comments about how my face is too dark and everything that we... My racial like, girl. I remember the first time I watched Love Island, like, you know, they go in, like, their little getting ready room or whatever, and they all, like, at night time, they take off their foundation. It's like they're peeling <laughs> off a mask. Their skin is white terrible. as snow, but the foundation they use is like it's so dark and they're the same type of people are like oh america why are you guys so obsessed with race go wash off that foundation right and like nobody should be changing their skin color and like just live in your truth be who you are be who you are <laughs> it's just, everybody's skin I, is beautiful it is the, like, it's actually beautiful like and we yeah. need to talk about that like we need to mm-hmm. make sure that people but, are like actually like, believe let's in this. cancel skin alterations no more bleaching no more tanning just be your own skin please i am all for that i am yeah. all for that and obviously like people tan you know what i mean like naturally during the summer yeah. and during the winter right but obviously, it's if not you go outside like, and you get darker like duh mm-hmm. like that's your skin but if you're using mm-hmm. products yes. going to the salon doing all these treatments yeah no let me let let us tell you a secret right now white people there is a reason why we age gracefully we don't be doing all the shit y'all be doing you know what i mean like they go to the i mean obviously maybe genetics too like yes like when you tan too it makes your skin so disgusting like it turns into leather they jasmine they'll be in their 40s looking wrinkly crusty like girl let me tell you their... i'm sorry but <laughs> i have seen so many 20 year olds already have premature wrinkles literally they don't put on sunscreen oh i remember do you remember that trend on tiktok where it was like um i know what you look like about. now and then yes. you put on the old age filter there was this one white girl she was wrinkly like people thought she had the filter on <laughs> I remember I remember because who you were talking about. Had, you don't Yeah, she had so much skin damage and she was like our age. She, she was younger. So much, she was 18. Really? Yeah. Oh yeah. And you know, she I'm looked like, like I'm sorry, there's like, nothing. She was wrong. like she looked like she was pushing like at least 40. Like because And that's actually a lot. Like, literally their skin will be like First of all, they don't even tan the right shade. A lot of these girls will be getting orange tans. Then yeah. their skin is getting wrinkly, turning into leather, looking like orange wrinkles. Like, I don't know. Like, okay. I'm I, sorry, but you don't look good. Like, no, no, no. Why okay, are you listen not, for aging? <laughs> there's nothing wrong with aging. Wait, wait, wait. There's nothing wrong with aging. However, when you're like 
doing that to yourself like so? I'll be aging naturally like that's something I'll go through yeah but when you're like tanning so extremely that your skin is turning into leather like that's not even aging that's damage like that's sun damage. that is and it's actually it's you know your chances of getting cancer from that is very high mm-hmm. so right. it's like it's, it's not good for you it's, it's bad for you you're putting yourself at risk for cancer your skin is turning into leather like why exactly it, it's not a good yeah. look all shades are beautiful be in your own skin it's okay to be pale it, i was because i was wondering like why did tanning become a thing because mm-hmm. i remember like during like prehistoric or not prehistoric but <laughs> like early america like mm-hmm. pale skin was the beauty standard and like um like during like slavery like when white women would go outside they would literally walk around with umbrellas so that their skin wouldn't get darker but, like they literally wanted their skin to look like porcelain the lighter you are the more beautiful you were and so i always wonder like why is it now suddenly a thing to tan your skin when it's damaging your skin? Um, and so apparently skin tanning was popularized by Coco Chanel. Basically, she like went on vacation one time. I don't know where, maybe like Spain yeah. or like South of France or something. And when she came back from her vacation, she was really tan. And then like suddenly like it became like a thing to be tan because it became a like having tan skin basically became a symbol that you were rich because you had enough money to like go on vacation or like go outside and like do like rich sports like play tennis or like go golfing that kind of stuff like things that like wealthy people do and like that's how it became a thing associates tanning with um being like richer like i feel like that's look yeah that's so interesting yeah but yeah. it's like so interesting too because it's like people who are naturally dark are seen as like poor and savages especially and this in and that. european like when you go to asia, asia like you will find tanning like you know dark skin is like associated with people who work in the fields like the poor people so yeah. i don't know like why it's like completely right when white people do it it's different yeah, like, I don't know why it's taking like, But then that makes sense because everything that white people often take or they do, it's met with, like, praise. You know what I mean? Especially with the media. Yeah. So. And then I feel like also, like, during, like, the early 2000s, um, like, the Jersey Shore era, that also, mm-hmm. like, popularized skin tanning a lot. That's I feel like that's when people started doing, like, extreme tanning. Because like, the they were doing terrible tanning. Because I feel like, like were, all the people on Jersey Shore, they were Italian. Yeah, I feel like that's when like used to do real bad tanning. Yeah, I feel like, like they when were people saw that. Like, oh, I want to be tan too. Yeah, like I'm so, so like I love my brown skin, but tanning does not look good on white people, right. especially that extreme tanning. It looks like. Mm-hmm an abnormality in my opinion yeah like you can tell when someone something is not natural mm-hmm. so i don't know also, what's so whole... have you seen the show botched yeah did you see that episode where that german lady went in and made herself black i changed meanwhile from a white woman to a black woman to an right. Right. <laughs> this is real sorry. This is melanotan. No, no. It's well, not. it's a relative of that. It's an MSH simulator. You actually just change your skin. You're serious. And wait, wait, wait. She's German, blonde hair, blue eyes. And she, like, took this chemical. She, like, went to the doctor and got these injections um, to make, like, you can get something that, like, makes your body produce melanin. And she really, like, up. wanted to turn herself into a black woman. And it's, like, the fact that, like, people can literally just, like, inject themselves to change their mm-hmm. skin color. Like, what? That's... I didn't even know there was a process for that. Like, I didn't know if there was, like, a procedure for that. Yeah. But it seems... I'm actually curious now. I'm going to do research and on also, this. And also, when she went on the show, Bob, she, she asked them if they could make her nose bigger. 
so she could look black. And they were like, no, no. But she like went to go visit Kenya so she could connect with black culture. Moving on. <laughs> what the? <laughs> okay, I I really think this next topic actually talks about that in depth. We're talking about plastic surgery. That you are promoting unattainable standards of beauty in any way. No, I don't. Because I think we get up, we do the work, we work out, you know. First of all, let me tell you guys something. Research has actually shown, shown that white women get the most plastic surgery. And there was a certain time where up to 70% were getting 70% of plastic surgery was done by white women. I really, this like brings me to this like conclusion where, first of all, I don't think black women are given the praise we deserve. I don't think we're appreciated as much as we should be by society. Mm-hmm. And I know like some, we're not supposed to like uphold our, we're not supposed to always think about um, ourselves like in terms of like how society thinks of us, but society is what we live in without like the American society, the U.S., this is where we live. So it is going to affect us to a certain extent, especially young Black women. And our features, our hair, our bodies, all this stuff, our language, our, our you know, dialects, accents, it's not praised. But whenever it's with, whenever it's on a white woman or even a lighter shade um, mm. person, it's often praised. And I really think mm. just like Black features, on themselves are usually praised when they're yeah. just like on lighter skin color and just skin tones. The liner definitely changed my life. I always have found it interesting um, with like lips, right? Because like black mm-hmm. people, we've like always been made fun of our lips, and like you know, in America, like they used to like um, in like those old TV shows when they would make characters of black people like they would overdraw their lips and make like clown lips to imitate black people mm-hmm. but then it's like like black people were always thought of as ugly for our lips but then with white people i've noticed that um most white people have thinner lips but the white women that do have naturally full lips are like seen as the most beautiful have you noticed that like True. scarlett johansson for example yes um and, and also, like, other white women, like, or Angelina Jolie. Like, the white women that do have naturally full lips are seen as the most beautiful. But then, like, the majority of black women do have full lips. Mm-hmm. And we're seen as exactly. ugly for having that. And I don't know, have you seen the recent, like, TikTok filter where it gives you, like, bigger lips? And there were mm-hmm. so many white people who were using the filter. And they were like, oh, my God, mm-hmm. I look ugly. And oh, really? so many, yeah, like there's so many black women and black uh, people who dwelled those videos and like they make their they made their own videos. They're like, mm. yeah. oh, so this filter makes you ugly, and then they took like, it off. Or have you seen that they one had... TikTok filter that like makes your eyes really small and your nose and lips really big, and people like oh record yourself with this filter and then take yes. it off to see how beautiful you really are. Yeah, it's like. People literally have those features. Those like features. People literally do have small eyes and big lips and big noses. So it's like the fact that like you feel like these features are making you ugly. I mean, it really shows like at the end of the day, these features are being made by people. So mm-hmm. yeah. if anything, these all these people are just like exposing themselves on what they really think is beautiful. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you yeah. have to have this certain eyes this are nose, the side lips, mm-hmm. only on white people to be considered beautiful. Right. And if not, you have to have the same features, be lighter skin tone. Or, you know, you can still be dark, but that's your downfall. You know what I mean? But if you're dark, you, you better have a small nose or something. Like Exactly. You better be tall, skinny, long legs, be a model. Mm-hmm. And it, it just shows, I don't know, like it really, if anything, I'm glad, like, these people are coming forward because I'm like I'm learning on what yeah. y'all really think and 
the Kardashians, not the Kardashians in general, they're not, they're not new to plastic surgery. I, mm-hmm. I feel like at this point, every single one of them has had plastic surgery. And notably, oh, sure. Kylie Jenner, she, Kylie Jenner has gone through, she has undergone through so many cosmetic procedures from her teenage years up until now. I don't know how many she's gotten. I don't want to guess. But we all know what she looked like before and what she looks like now. No yeah. one can deny she has made herself look racially ambiguous throughout that, throughout that time. Mm-hmm. No, and honestly, like, sometimes when I look at her Instagram, it's like giving a new race every time. Like, a lot of the times it's Black culture. But then, mm-hmm. I don't know if you saw this one video. I forgot what it was for. We'll, I'll put the clip here. But she literally looks like a Middle Eastern woman. Like, the way she did her makeup, like, it was, I don't know, like, this video, it literally looked like a commercial from, the, like, a beauty ad from the, straight from the Middle East. And then there's other times where she, like, looks Hispanic. Just anything but white. Anything but white. And let's not forget, Kylie is fully white. So, mm-hmm. if anything, no one can act argue that she's she's not caucasian um she's not white homegirl's full white right she is fully fully white white. two white parents because and that's another thing because it's like kim can kind of use her armenian side as an excuse but with kendall and kylie that's not the case because they are a hundred percent white a hundred percent and it's they should not look like Kim. They've literally gotten surgery to look more like him. You guys should not look like her because you're not Armenian. I'm just so much more than that reference photo my sister showed their plastic surgeons. But I feel like Kylie has done like more just to look like him. Like I think she's yeah. literally imitating. And I've seen like a lot of commentaries on this. So mm-hmm. I definitely see her like literally trying to. I mean, at this right. point, she doesn't have to because she has built her brand and people know her for something. Mm-hmm. But she earlier, like, I think that's how it started. She was trying to look a lot like her sister. Who's yeah. not, who is racial, you know, she's not the same ethnicity as you. Know, you. Kim, she had some spice, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Kim, you know the thing about Kim? I really, I think Kim was beautiful. Yeah. And I also mm-hmm. wanted people to understand that the media did not do her justice. Like, as much as Kim has done, like, very questionable, horrendous stuff, I do want to mm-hmm. say that Kim also underwent, like, a horrible um, experience through the media when she was with Paris Hilton. Yeah. This girl was, she was called Jafar. Yeah, like, they used to call her Jafar. She, and it shows... She was next to Barbie. Like, she was next to the ideal yeah. Barbie. And I know, like, that does not give you any justification to, like, appropriate culture. But it fucks up with your mind. It, like, really messes up with your mind. So, yeah. we have to understand but, the role of media as well. Yeah. And it's really no surprise that the majority of white women are the ones getting plastic surgery. Because when you look at the plastic surgery trends... It's lip injections, something that most women of color, you know, naturally already have lips. And then now you see the fox eye trend, which is imitating Asian features. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, we have the BBLs. The infamous BBL. You have some black with that booty. And I think the BBL represents, like, what is wrong with how women's bodies are viewed in society, especially within just, like, media itself. I really think our bodies are usually trends because when you look out, when you look into many of the body um, ideals, like the body, uh, the what, like, the typical body people aspire to have, they vary with every single decade, right? Some of these vary drastically from decade to decade, and it's not 
it's not realistic for it's not realistic it's not a realistic expectation for a women's body to develop that much with just a year you know we're not talking about different generations we're talking about a woman who was 20 and now is 30 has to try to fit into a whole different body um wow. idea ideal body mm-hmm. um you know body yeah. goal and i remember like just growing up during the early 2000s um in so many movies like in mean girls or in white shakes and so many other movies um bring it on like all of those movies there were there was always that one scene where a girl would be like trying on her clothes or something and she'd be like oh like does this make my butt look too big or like if a girl like walked in with a big butt like all the characters would make fun of her and be like oh her butt's so big like Report those compliments to your ass before it gets so big it forms its own website. I'm cellulite Sally. Look at my huge badonkey. Oh, and don't... Like, if you had it, like, if you were skinny with a big butt, you were fat. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden, it's, like, a thing to have a big butt. We grew up with those movies. So, mm-hmm. I don't know if that affected you somehow, but it definitely affected me, especially in my teenage years, because... You know, like I was that tall girl in in high school. I was taller than every guy in my class. I already had, you know, curves like when I was 14, 15. So kind of like consuming these movies, like I promise you, like I have gone through a period, like I've literally gone through like so many times where I'm like, oh, I'm going to be happy when I lose weight. I'm going to be happy when I have like that skinny waist. I'm going to be happy when I have that hourglass figure. And I think this is like a very, I really, I, I, because I've talked to, I've talked to a lot of women who have met like across my life, like they've had similar experiences where you were never enough for how you looked. And it sucks to start at a young age because you normalize this and you bring it to your adulthood where you're in, you're oh, you're just like hoping for that glow up. You're hoping for that makeover. They had those in those movies. They had those movies. They had, it was like, I loved watching those movies because I'm like, you know what? If she has hope, I got hope too. <laughs> so it, but it's crazy because it's like you would grow up seeing this and you're like, okay, like mm-hmm. I need to lose weight. I'm not supposed to have a butt. And then 10 years later, you need a butt. And now you have to get surgery. You have to get a BBL. It's, it's the same way we buy clothes to fit into a trend. And then buy a new item. Where in this case, you're harming your mental health and your physical health. And it's crazy that now, it, you know, white women want to have larger butts because Mm -hmm. there was a time in history where you know white people would literally they would um think that black people were not humans for having a larger butt I believe it was in South Africa I might be wrong but they there was this black woman who had a very large butt and they put her in a human zoo like on display um Mm -hmm. she was born um in South Africa which at the time was a British colony. Fuck the British. And, and they put her in a human zoo along with many other black people. Um, there was a large zoo filled with black people treated like animals for white people to watch. And they had this woman in there because she had a large butt. She died at 25 to 26. Oh, wow. And there's actually this photo of her... Um, where you can see it, where she's actually um, compared to Kim Kardashian's paper magazine cover. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen this paper magazine cover because this was the cover that broke the internet, um, where Kim is, you know, shown um, posing with her butt because, you know, this was the time where she was becoming known for her butt. And the photos compared to Sarah Bartman, who was a woman who was literally being uh, oppressed for having a large butt. 
And I do want to like point out that this was a woman who was sexually assaulted. Mm -hmm. Trigger warning. I'm so sorry. Um, she contracted um, syphilis, which obviously at the time, I'm sure, was not, there wasn't like that many treatments for it, right? Mm -hmm. And to die at that age, you, ha first of all, this was, this was 17 in the 1800s. Obviously, Black people were not treated with re respect or anything, but 25 to 26 is still a very, very young age. And man, mm. it's just like, it's but really insensitive. You know, it's crazy. Like, black women were literally treated as, in the most inhumane way, as animals put into zoos for having a large butt. Now you see white women getting surgery to have large butts. You see the Kardashians getting fame and fortune for having and large, large butts. butts that they got from the doctor. And you also notice this, the culture um, of how this is still, um, like how black women were treated like animals. I really think this culture is still continuing on right now, continuing on right now because how black women are viewed, black women with big butts, very voluptuous like figures, they're treated terribly and they're over-sexualized in mm -hmm. hey, especially girls. Yeah, we have girls, uh, we have y literally young children who let's say are wearing different colors. They're wearing something, I don't even know because to me it seems like what a ch child should wear and what they can mm -hmm. wear, but you will find grown ass people saying oh your your girl is too grown but when it's like the, the same outfit same hairstyle and it's a white girl wearing that no one no one bats it no one says anything mm -hmm. so i really think this culture is still continuing on where black women are over sexualized and white women are still sexualized but at least they can make money off of it right so I, I really think that culture has to change. And I think women's bodies like trending as a whole should change because mm -hmm. we're not accessories. My body. Oh, 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 <laughs> oh, no, I was going to say like, I, my body is not like my body puts me through life. Mm -hmm. And it's gonna reflect what I'm going through. Yeah. It's not some. It's not a handbag I'm carrying around. This is a whole living person. So why should I be a trend? And why should I fit into a trend? Mm -hmm. And now you're seeing the trend actually come to an end. People are seeing the BBL era is coming to an end. There's allegations that Kim has removed her BBL or reduced it or whatever, and. Pretty soon, we're going to start seeing a lot of Instagram models possibly remove their BBLs. Um, and it's going to go, we're going to fall back into the trend of having a more natural butt or possibly no butt at all. Mm. Um, and the end of the BBL era really just shows how disposable women's bodies are, especially Black women. One minute, your body can be a trend. The next, it's not. So when we... I don't know, like just the BBL era ending, people like look at BB, they look down upon BB, BBLs so much. I mean, mm -hmm. I still think a lot of women are praised for BBLs. We see that with the Kardashians, but we forget that black women have body types that these women imitate. They cannot just suck the fat out of their asses. You know what I mean? Right. Like they still have those bodies that they were born with naturally, that their bodies are developing naturally. So I think it it's harmful for Black women because they cannot change those bodies like Kim Kardashian just did. Mm -hmm. So one of the main reasons that the Kardashians have been able to get away 
with appropriating Black culture and altering their appearance is because of their association with Black people and integrating Black people into their family and using Black men and children as accessories. We see this with Kim and Kanye, Chloe and Tristan Thompson, Kylie and Travis Scott, Chris and, and Corey Campbell, and, you know, Kendall has a new basketball player every day. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm shaming her for being with different men. But it becomes a pattern, like, if you're just targeting Black men. Because, yeah. what are we doing here, Kendall? Mm-hmm. But I feel like um, Kim was, like, kind of the one to start it all. First of all, Kim got famous for her tape with Ray J, a Black man. And then I feel like after she married Kanye, that's when the other sisters were like, okay, okay, let me get me a Black king too. Like, (laughs) right now, Kim and Kanye are actually in the process of getting divorced. And I wondered, like, because I feel like Kim didn't really start appropriating Black culture until she married Kanye. I feel like prior to Kanye, she was more into her Armenian culture. But I wonder, like, now that her and Kanye... Or divorcing, will she still continue to try to include herself in the culture? Or if she'll back off a little bit? Or maybe she will continue to try to participate in Black culture because she does still have Black kids. Ooh, I think that's a tough question. I don't even know if you were asking me the question. <laughs> it's open discussion. <laughs> I really... I think we've already like discussed like disposable like how black culture black people are like basically disposable when it comes to situations like this. Yeah, I really think she's gonna go back to her white roots. You think so? Or just like her well, Caucasian she, side, right? Like now that Con, like her and Kanye are divorcing, like are we gonna see Armenian Kim again? I hope so. I but really hope so. I'm like. She does have black kids, so she might be like, mm, I want to match my hair with my kids. Well, maybe, maybe, just maybe we'll she has some dignity. Mm-hmm. And doesn't we'll want to her We kids. might be getting Armenian Kim back. We might. At the end of the day, we can talk about Kim, the Kardashians, the Jenners, as much as we want. But they they have a platform, they have a fan base, they have people feeding into their lifestyles, they have people aspiring to be them. And this is where accountability for Kim's cult comes in. Kim's cult is basically her fan base, the people who constantly let her get away with all the stuff she does and say they make excuses for her basically and one of those excuses obviously is her Armenian identity but I think the continuous praise and consumption of products from her only feeds into the epidemic we have called black fishing so as a I'm not a fan of Kim but as a collective, like, you know, society people, I think we have to stop praising these types of women and we have to actually hold them accountable and hurt their pockets. Because that's, mm-hmm. it seems like that's the only way they're going to listen. Mm-hmm. Or that's maybe the only way they're going to stop. I'm not, I'm not saying uh-huh. Kim to become the next MLK, but she got to stop somewhere. Because you cannot continue, you cannot continue black fishing. And to end off this like, um, this section of this uh, of the podcast is, I think Kim black fishing was basically popularized by Kim Kardashian, but it was normalized by her cult because now we have people imitating her. Yeah, I definitely think black fishing became more popular with Kim. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's also like gone beyond that as well because I've seen other celebrities do way more than she has in terms of like appropriating black culture. But speaking of her cult so and like just like her fan base letting her get away with things, I've actually recently unfolded all the Kardashians on Instagram. 
because one day I just thought like why am I following them because mm-hmm. I'm I mean, like if I'm sitting here like complaining about them like why would I be following them so I mean I encourage everybody to do the same and I promise you there's a lot and in general there's... I was just like oh and I was gonna say like there's just like a lot other black women who I'm pretty sure you would learn a lot more from them. I don't know why black women are following the Kardashians. In my right. opinion, that's mm-hmm. stupid. Like, and in general, I've just been like unfollowing celebrities that like don't like provide me anything. Like, that don't true. like give me any like inspiring content. I guess because it kind of I, I feel like. Yes, we're doing things. We're just following people for the sake of following just because they might have like a um, huge following or they're this like celebrity everyone follows. But at the end of the day, I do believe in like how our unconscious, like subconscious, like mind is like very powerful. So Mm -hmm. it's definitely going to have like some type of impact on you. So I really think we should all, like you said, and follow them. It, yeah. At least it's 10 people, one person. At the end of the day, it might become 2 million. So it, it's something that yeah. we should do. And because everybody, I feel like everybody, like even not just black people, but like I feel like people in general have always said like, oh yeah, I hate the Kardashians. Like I feel like, especially like a few years ago, like it was like a big thing to like hate the Kardashians. But people have yeah. always followed them. Like people love to hate them. Like if you hate that them so much, true. why do you keep up with them? Bravo. I don't okay. I have never watched a full season of the keeping up with the Kardashians. And that's like not to flex, but like I'm just saying it's Yeah. I'm not even gonna lie, in middle school, like I had my little Kardashian era, like I was watching it weekly. I wanted to be them. Really? Yeah. It's okay. We're all into that. But at the end of the day, like when we look at black fishing, we just see that white women are able to get away with it because when they black fish, it makes them black enough to be sexy, but light enough to be beautiful. When you have mm-hmm. white skin, but black features, you're able to maintain your white privilege while still getting the benefits of black beauty. Yeah. And one thing we notice that with many like non-black people who blackfish is at least the popularized, you know, the popular people we know, it's like they tan the right amount where it's like enough where they can still be identified as a white person. So like, mm-hmm. so that they can, because I don't think anyone wants to be treated like a black person. We don't want to be treated like black people, like how black people are treated by police and all that. We mm-hmm. don't like that's what we're fighting. So right. they everybody still wants not- to be black, but nobody wants to be mm. insert. So there's this like quote we uh, we got f- while we were researching from Ayanna Thompson. She's the author of Blackface, and it basically mentions how a white woman is more desirable because she's beautiful regardless of having a black face on and that like Loki makes me feel like this is just like an experiment for all these like non-white non-black women because they can always go back to being white it doesn't take that much for you to like you know become untan to like go back to your shade you would still be considered beautiful but it's just like very dangerous that you're out here like experimenting with skin tone features all this because you know you're still going to be considered beautiful regardless of having a literal black face you don't have to be like you don't have to have the black face to be black face because but so at the end of the day, I feel like what we can all just learn from the Kardashians and all the other blackfishers is that it is okay to live in your skin. 
It is mm-hmm. okay to be pale. It is okay to not have a big butt. It's okay to not have full lips. And um, your body no, is but not seriously, a I feel like people should stop tanning their skin. People should stop altering their features to look like a different race. I feel like everybody is beautiful. Pale skin is beautiful. Dark skin is beautiful. Nobody needs to blackfish. And I understand that, like, I mean, it really is because black people are cool. Like, that's why people blackfish. Because I feel like black people, we are the blueprint. We are the trendsetters. Everything that's cool in America comes from black people. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Um, Living your Thank truth. you. Appreciate your skin. And don't blackfish. Period. Thank you for listening to the next episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast and rate. Please do that. Support Black women. Yes. And make sure to follow us on all social media platforms at norella.co. Please and thank you.